Psalm 65. Hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked. From the plot of evil doers. They sharpen their targets like swords, and they aim through ones like deadly arrows. They shoot from a bush at the innocent. They shoot suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their fears. They say, who will you see it? They pilot injustice and say, we have a device and a perfect plan. Surely, the human might at the heart, at the heart are gaining. But God will shoot them with his arrows. They will suddenly be struck down. He will turn their own targets against them and they bring them to them. All who seek see them will receive their heads in scones. All people will look fear. They will proclaim the work of God and the border what he has done. The nations will rejoice in the Lord and take their views in him. All the upright in heart will glory in him. Glory in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, so is it now, and forever shall be. Amen. I request that you be seated as we hear our first reading. So then, as often as we have the chance, 
we should do good to everyone, and especially to those who belong to our family in the faith. And this is the word of God. Show 
hear us today. Hear our petitions, O oh Lord, as we bring them up to you. Wherever we are, back at home, in the church, may you hear us, O oh Lord, as we petition, as we bring our prayer request up to you. We humble ourselves as we bring this country unto your hands, O oh Lord. That you will look us for King of glory, you give wisdom, you give the justice, you pour your Holy Spirit and help the Spirit upon our readers, O oh God. The President, the Deputy President, and all those who are in command, O oh God. Administrators, O oh God, may you give them wisdom, O oh Lord. That whatever decision they make, O oh God, it will be directed by the Lord. For your honor and your glory, O oh God, that the country may prosper, O oh Father. And it may be a, 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 a hearing speech, O oh God, that they give because it will be honored by you. May you honor their steps, O oh God. May you take them their ways of King of glory. O oh Father, we pray that God you may remember the children. You may That in everything, O oh Lord, you may be glorified as you provide unto them, as you help them mentor and social king of glory, and as you provide unto them. Father, we pray that there will be peace about in our boundaries, O King. And even in hospitals, O oh God, you be found because your Holy Spirit will be with them. We thank you, we give all the glory. Provide. Let them have thy understanding, O oh God. And Lord, your Lord, we we'll thank you as we see all of us as a country be able to defeat this COVID 19 and all other pandemics, spiritual, mental, and all of them, O oh God. Father, we thank you for even the churches, O oh God. Pour your living spirit upon our other uh, bishops. Pastors, that Lord, they may speak as you speak to them. We thank you for the your order them to give unto this country all of the spiritual guidance, O oh God, because you have anointed them to preach the good news to the poor, to them who are destitute, to them to bring hope and trust in you, O oh God. As we have faith in you, O King of glory, we will be able to go far. Lord, they watch, we worship you. And then who are also worshiping at home, O Lord, may they take it serious, Lord. As you guide us to obey the rules of God, so that this pandemic will stop. And dear Lord, you have all of what it takes to heal all of us, O God and to protect us, to restore our back to thy church, and more stronger than ever, O King. Father, we pray that we may strengthen thy church, thy temple, the altar of God, and be an altar that we will worship you all the days of our lives, O Lord. Father, we thank you for the families, O God. For you know all of us, O God, by our names, O King. You have written our names, on our paths, O Lord. And tell Lord, you will never forget us, O King. Even the children back at home, O God, traumatized by not even going to school, they do not understand what is happening. May you, Lord, remember their hearts, O Lord, that they will worship you there, Lord, wherever they are, that they will go through it and you, they, will, they will become victorious, O Lord, King of glory. How we thank you. You are hearing power. Remember them, O God, who are sick. You are hearing power, O Lord. Father, for those who are traumatized, O God, all of us, O God, we ask you to remember the fathers and mothers of God who are struggling, even to get something to put on the table, O King of glory. May you 
spirit. Praise the Lord. Church again. This Father the Lord has been gracious to us. And we wish to say how grateful we are because of all the Lord is doing in our lives. And uh, the Lord will continue even to bless us. We want to thank God even for the progress that we can see as we, uh, God continues to answer our prayers in terms of the, the way forward of this nation and the country in terms of the, the pandemic that we find ourselves in, the COVID-19. And I believe we are now almost used to living with it and uh, the Lord will continue to guide us so that we remain safe, we stay safe in our homes and wherever we are. Even as the, the lockdown, the boundaries from uh, those counties that were locked were opened, as people now flow freely uh, to where they want to go, we are always reminded that we need to take responsibility, uh, individual, personal responsibility to protect ourselves, to protect our parents, to protect those other people. And as C.S. Kagwe has always been saying many a times that uh, you always need to assume that the person next to you might have it. You might have it. And all of us can get it. And you can get it. I can get it. I think this has become a very, very popular, uh, popular thing uh, in this nation and beyond. So, can we decide even during this time? I know many uh, thought that uh, by today uh, we will be resuming back to church, but that was not the case. That the churches uh, will be opened uh, next week. And so uh, the days that were given, if you count uh, Tuesday will be what day? It should be, uh, is it when? <laughs> uh, on, on Tuesday it will be 14. If you plus uh, 7, uh, then we see how the day goes. Uh, we might, uh, that, and it, is, it could, might not be possible for us even to come to church next Sunday, uh, but we have to wait uh, what will happen, the protocols, the guidelines that are given, we must follow them. And we of Kenyatans, ASK Kenyatans, are doing all that we need to do uh, to put uh, things in place, uh, providing uh, quality washing uh, equipment or hand washing equipment whereby you will not uh, be expected to pray about with the tap. You already need to use your foot uh, to get uh, the soap, uh, get the water, and then uh, you are done. And we believe that uh, the, whatever we are trying to do will ensure that all our members who come to church as the day will be announced when we are coming back, all of us will be saved. And as we continue, let's continue praying uh, God. Uh, this day, once again, as we continue to struggle and see how we can do things, we thank God for this opportunity to come to meet worship uh, in this uh, house of the Lord. And today with us, we have the praise and worship team from the new department and we want to thank you so 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 much for availing yourself to come and minister with us uh, i know this was your time maybe you would have been asking why are we as youth you are in you're very important we love you so much and we'll continue uh, to give you the opportunities uh, to serve the lord we also have uh, the team uh, doing uh, recording of our service so that it will be able to get to all our people. And we want to thank God, uh, we took a team for what we're doing. And on the altar, we have with us uh, Mr. Samson, Reader Samson with us. Now he's uh, a popular face uh, in this church because he's always up, I mean, present. We thank God for you. We also have uh, Relina Nancy, another uh, very committed Relina in the church, always available. And last and then we have Relina Sabina, we are happy to have you uh, in this service. And lastly, we have Reverend David Boro, who is uh, uh, one of us in this parish. Wilson Kamau Mwangi is my name. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. 
uh, as my Lord and Savior, and by God's grace, the vicar of this church and parish. And we once again welcome all of you as we prepare ourselves uh, to hear the word of God, that our souls and lives will be blessed. And so, our song. You go here, you guys, you go here. Let's read it. Uh, let's read it. I think it's, it's good. Because the, the Hebrew community is uh, uh, no God that want abide. You go here, you guys, you go here. You go here. You go by the fact that 
the one to obey his commands and walk in his ways. Last Sunday, we were able to talk about the new man. And the new man was not just to become a new man, he was to become a new man for the realization and acceptance that one was a sinner. And when one repents and is in Christ, becomes a new creature. A new creature who cannot now live alone. You need other people in the community, in the society, in the home, because we are not living this world even after accepting Jesus and getting saved. We will live among the people. And for us to be able to live happily with other people without a lot of the challenges, then the issue of forgiveness comes in handy because all of us need to understand how to live with one another. When people are staying together, there will be issues uh, where maybe one heart one another, where one wrong one another. This is life. And today I would wish to speak on what is forgiveness. And the real issue that I want to address is I would want us to understand what forgiveness really is. What forgiveness uh, really is. And the words that we did read from the book and from the Gospel of Luke, these were the words that Jesus uh, said on the cross when this was during his crucifixion and before the end of the uh, Number 34 of Luke chapter 2, number 23, Jesus said this word, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. I, I like this very powerful statement. It is very powerful, and we need to understand it. Now, when Jesus said that, I, I just need to do uh, justice to this. And say this, that forgiveness uh, may be the most misused, may I use that word? Forgiveness may be the most misused, misapplied, and misunderstood quality in our culture. Why do I say this? I say this because we think we know what forgiveness is all about. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we really thought, we think we know what forgiveness is all about, but I'm putting it to you, as the lawyers do, because the lawyers in court, they will stand up and say, I put it to you, and then continue uh, whatever you wanted to say, and I put it to all ourselves this morning, that we do not really understand what forgiveness is all about. And I'll be dealing with this subject uh, briefly before I come to the end. And before reading further, I would want us to take a minute to do this little quiz by deciding if each statement is true or false. And the statement will be screened out there. Now, these statements are very, very, very clear. One of the statements says, a person should not be forgiven until asking for it. A person should not be forgiven until asking to be forgiven. So if he doesn't ask to be forgiven, then it means he will not be forgiven. Is that a statement correct? Statement number two. Forgiving includes minimizing the offense and the pain caused by your action to that other person. Is that a statement again correct? Number three. Forgiveness includes restoring trust and in reuniting a 
relationship. Is that again true or correct? The other statement. You haven't really forgiven until you have forgotten the offense. Is another statement. Is it true? Is it correct? And the last statement I wanted us to think about is when you see somebody hurt, it is your duty to forgive the offender. Is also that statement correct? Ladies and gentlemen, when you read the Bible and see what God has to say about forgiveness, you discover that all five of those statements are false. They are not correct. As we look at them, because they are all there. The first one, we say it, a person should not be forgiven until asking for it. That the Bible says it is wrong. The second one was forgiving includes minimizing the offense and the pain cost. Is that true again? No. Thirdly, it was forgiveness includes restoring trust and returning a relationship. And fourthly, I had mentioned you haven't really forgiven until you have forgotten what wrongs were done to you and the offenses. And lastly, I say, when you see somebody hurt, it is your duty to forgive the offender. Now, the Bible says that this is not the way. Because the Bible sees uh, it from a different point of view. God has to say about forgiveness, and what God has to say about forgiveness is what I want to share with us this morning. You discover that those five statements are false. They are not right. Then how did you do or how did you do it? Ladies and gentlemen, we, or I am going to spend the next few someones that might be following after this, looking at what forgiveness is really is. Because most people just don't understand forgiveness. And hence, an increase in domestic violence, an increase in court cases, an increase in killings, an increase in separation and divorce, increasing of the many, 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 many denominations you see all over the world. Because when people disagree, one thing the way out is starting his own church. And starting a church does not solve the problem. Because it came as a result because the two people maybe who are dividing, who are separating, could not agree, could not forgive one another. And so they part ways. And this is very, very, very serious. Brethren, if you read from the English dictionary, just before I say something about the Bible, the, if you Google the word forgiveness, the real definition of it, psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment that you have, or vigilance towards a personal group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually divide, deserve your forgiveness. I'm saying this is a conscious, deliberate decision to, to release those feelings, those barakara that has been brought to you by a person or a group of people who have really harmed you. And this is in regardless of whether you they, they deserve it. If they, if they don't deserve to be forgiven, now the psychologist says that this person can be forgiven because it is a deliberate decision. Just as important 
as defining what forgiveness is, though, is understanding what forgiveness is not. Experts who stand there or teach forgiveness make clear that when you forgive, you do not gross over or deny the seriousness of the offense. By mean offense against you. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting. No. No. Nor does it mean condoning or excusing offenses. No. Though forgiveness can help repair a damaged relationship, it does not obligate you to reconcile with the person who harmed you or release them from legal accountability. I, I know what I'm talking about. This is uh, from psychologists and I think it is important in my opinion. So instead, forgiveness brings the forgiver peace. When you forgive, you have peace of mind. And it frees you or me or him or her from colossus anger. That anger that will make you do things you regret in your entire life. Sometimes you watch this program that comes for the normal manga of Gerezan in our church. And you see these people giving testimonies. I wish I knew there was something else I could have done. I could not have killed. I could not have done that. I'm rotting in jail. I've been in jail for 20, 30 years because of anger. And so when you forgive somebody, that anger goes. And when that anger goes, then you become a better person. While there is someone, or there is some debate over whether true forgiveness requires positive feelings toward the offender, experts agree that it is at least, that it at least involves letting go, letting go of deeply held negative feelings. And when those negative feelings you have against your wife, your husband, your, your co-worker, your, that other person who have hurt you, if you let go of that other and forgive, you recover your person, your humanity. And at home, you'll be for very, many, 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 many years. And the Lord will continue blessing you. Now, let me talk about the research with the psychology. But may I say this? Real forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, is unconditional. There is no attachment to it. You don't earn the forgiveness. It is unconditional. It comes from God. And it comes through that other person who you have had without any condition. You don't, I don't deserve it. You don't forgive for it. Forgiveness is not based on a promise to never do it again, to never repeat the action you did. It's not based on that, ladies and gentlemen. What am I saying? You offer it whether someone asks for it or not. <laughs> Remember what the Lord's prayer says. Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those others. Does this simply mean if you have not been able to forgive someone who offended you, that even God does not forgive you? Because God forgives me and forgives you on condition you forgive others. And so you see the importance of forgiveness as I share with you today. So I need to offer forgiveness to that person who has offended me. Whether that person asks for it or do not ask for it. And that is what the Bible teaches us to do. And when Jesus himself stretched his hand on the cross and said this, very important word or statement. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. 
international version. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Remember, brethren, there's two things now with Jesus. None of them did ask for forgiveness. Nobody had asked for it, including Judas, including us. But the words were given, and the forgiveness became real in people who had not asked for it, who didn't did even deserve it. Nobody had said, please forgive me, Jesus, for what they are doing to you. Nobody took responsibility, but Jesus just offered it. Jesus took the initiative. It came from inside. Secondly, brethren, forgiveness is not minimizing the seriousness of the offense. No, the offense is still real. Things were done to you that were not good. And when you forgive, that does not mean that whatever was done to you or the seriousness of the offense that uh, was thrown to you is minimized. No, forgiveness is not minimizing the seriousness of that event, you know, uh, that offense. So the offense is serious, but I have to forgive. It's a requirement, it's a condition for me to be forgiven by God. For me to realize the happiness that comes to those that God has forgiven. If you read Psalm number 32, it talks about, uh, I like Psalm number 32, and I think I need to read just about or two. Uh, Psalm uh, chapter number 32 has this, what I just want to talk about. Because I like it, it brings out what I'm talking about very, 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 very clearly. Psalm chapter 32, uh, from just verse 1, what do we read? Blessed is he who, whose transgression are forgiven, whose sins are covered, because forgiveness covers those sins. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. Now deceit comes. When deceit comes, then we get ourselves into some other kind of problems. And you, you noted in the second reading, we were told to do away with deceit. If you read uh, verse number seven of Galatians chapter number six, it says, and this is very, very important. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man lives what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become wary of doing good. And I think forgiving one another is doing good and is a step in the right direction. It is no big deal, brethren. It really didn't hurt. Sometimes when, 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 when you offend somebody uh, and you say sorry and you ask for forgiveness and the pastor just tells you, no, 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 no. It really did hurt. You know there is some pain, but you are deceiving. You are, you are, you are just trying to, to, to be good, but it isn't. If it wasn't a big deal, then you don't need for, you don't need forgiveness. And you don't need to offer it. It is forgiveness because it is a big deal. I was hurt. I hurt you. You did wrong to me. I'm not happy about it. So then forgiveness comes in. So brethren, forgiveness is only for the big stuff. You don't use it for slights that are just minor issues.
issues. If something really requires forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, then you should not minimize it when somebody asks you for forgiveness. You should take that very seriously because it comes from the heart and there is pain in that person. Don't say to your friend, to your wife, to that other person, it wasn't a big deal. No, it was. It was a big deal. If it wasn't a big deal, then you don't need to ask for forgiveness. Just say this. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. Why? But if it was a big deal, then you need to admit it. You need to take responsibility, my brother, my sister, because a lot of bad things are happening when we are not able to forgive one another and move on with life. There are a lot of big deals in life. Have you noticed that? And what am I talking about? But there, are different, there is a difference between being wounded and being loved. Understand the two words? Being wounded and being loved. What is the difference between the two? Being wounded requires patience and acceptance of the person who has wounded you. That does not deserve forgiveness because the person did whatever he or she did to you unintentionally. If somebody wound you, Decision that you individually 
as we have been doing wrong and doing what we don't need to do. As a congregation, as a community, as a world, we repent all the sins we, we have committed. We repent, oh Lord. Have mercy on each and every one of us. Don't get annoyed with us. Forgive us, we come to you because we love you. And now those who want to give their life to Jesus, say this one, Lord Jesus, I come to you, a sinner. You died on the cross, and you ask that we will be forgiven, forgive me now. I receive you in my heart as my Lord and Savior. Delete my name from the book of death, and write my name in the book of life. I belong to you. I will live for you. Always help me to forgive others who hold me who hurt me. And I will live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed and have a good and blessed week ahead. And may the Lord be with you. Amen.
Even as we thank you for the, for, for the gift of forgiveness that has brought many who are fighting, many who could not see eye to eye through forgiveness that we receive from you, O God, that we extend to our neighbors and to those people that live to us. We are able to come in your presence and thanking you for forgiving us and that us have also forgiven those we have had. And now even as we bring our offerings to you, our tithes to you, our thanksgiving, our contributions towards our church construction. Father, we pray that you bless all those who stretch their hands and give without being watched by anybody. Because you have spoken to them in their hearts and they have found and understand the need to give. Father, bless what has been given. Bless what is being given today and what will continue to be given towards your church. Bless those who do that. Bless their families. Bless their work. Bless their going out and coming back. Rebuke the devil, O oh God, that we shall all remain protected by you. Even as the chicken protects the chicks, we know under your wings, under your protection, we are safe. And you continue to bless whatever we are doing with our hands. And that always will be grateful to you. Bless all of us. As even we leave this church, O oh God, to go to those other places that you have given us the opportunity to do, that you go with us and that you bless us. And now, Lord, as we thank you for the offerings and for the many other blessings that you have given to us, we want to thank you and bless your name that we have continued to bless the families, those have uh, people who are ailing in hospitals and in their homes. Father, we want to speak words of healing to come. We pray for those who have lost their beloved, the ones we know and those that we do not know, that Lord will continue to comfort them. And now may the Lord of harvest bless your crops, your maize and beans, your rice and potatoes, your tea and coffee, May the Lord of creation bless your animals, your cattle and cows, your sheep and goats, your chicken and pigs. May the Lord of all life bless your families, your husbands and wives, your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters. May the Lord of mercy have compassion on all the sick ones in the hospitals and at homes, all who mourn their arguments, all orphans and widows, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. And now this brings us to the end of our worship service uh, today from SKK Nataro. We invite you to like our page on Facebook and YouTube and watch the service uh, at your own time and the Lord will continue to bless all of us. And now, go in peace to that and serve God. When we will walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. Forget me.